so when I was doing all of the the different Zoom conversations with the the church members, uh, I think I mentioned this in my sermon with heart attitude number three. But this was uh, this this heart attitude of clearing up relationships was that other one of oh we're we're actually doing this. Like for a lot of people, this was their true to real moment. It gets real here. Yeah, like someone's actually asking my forgiveness when I think uh, we had uh, one of our, our church members say, you know, I've kind of lived by the, well, we'll just brush it under the rug and kind of move on and to actually uh, be confronted with someone seeking your forgiveness is a little awkward, a little, a little strange, but it has certainly brought a lot of longevity to relationships over time. But um, I just, thought maybe for uh, those who are listening, it would be helpful to look a little bit more, um, I know Pastor Ben talked a lot about, you know, what, what does the Bible say about living at peace with one another and clearing up relationships, that kind of stuff. But what does this practically look like of the clearing up of, of, a, of a relationship? Yeah, that's a really good question because if, if you're not familiar with it, you kind of like, well, what does that mean? What do I even say? What does it yeah. even look like? So. Um, one of the things I love about Hope Church is the way that we do the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. uh, because we actually take time to make sure that we have a clear relationship with the Lord and with each other before we have the Lord's Supper. So um, I, I'm just going to kind of give you like a, a version of what we talk about every time we do the Lord's Supper. So we even have a chance to rehearse all of this every time we do the Lord's Supper. And it's, it's always really helpful. Uh, so especially for those that are you know sort of just learning about the heart attitudes for the very first time like well, what what does it even look like so mm -hmm. i think one of the first steps is um you know you you kind of sometimes you know when you need to ask someone's forgiveness like you know that you clearly violated some form of something and like i got to clear this up our mm -hmm. relationship's not right but then sometimes you don't so if you do you can skip ahead but like i'd say anybody listening right now um, could just sort of pray and just ask the Lord, say, you know, is my, do I have an unclear relationship with anyone? Do I have an unclear relationship with you uh, and, and anyone in my spouse, my kids, my coworkers? And just, just ask him to, to, to answer that question. And the Holy Spirit will be very specific, mm -hmm. uh, which is always good because uh, it's, hey, when you said that, when you did that, Yes, you need to get, you need to ask forgiveness. So if you just sort of have this general vague sense of I'm awful, I'm horrible, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, then that's that may be the enemy. But but the first step is, is asking, um, Lord, is there anything between you and I or any other human that I need to clear up? And then when you become aware of something, uh, if, if you're aware of, of something uh, between you and God that's wrong, um, then you just you admit it. You, you say, God, when I did such and such, you know, when I had this uh, anger in my heart or this uh, lustful thought or whatever it was when I did that, that was wrong. That was sin. Will you please forgive me? So you name it and then you ask for forgiveness and then you thank him for forgiving you because he is faithful. He forgives us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, when we have offenses, um, either sort of the internal sins of the heart or, or just things that. Um, we need to clear up with God. Um, and, and by the way, you know, when, when we become a follower of Jesus and ask for the big forgiveness where we, we yield our life to him, well, yes, God forgives us. But then uh, we're humans and we're constantly messing up and we want to keep short accounts. So mm -hmm. even after uh, I have become a follower of Jesus and he's my savior, he's my Lord, I still mess up, you know, and I still need to keep a clear relationship with God moving forward because that's actually one of the places where we can um, sort of receive less power and clarity and our it's like I think one of the best illustrations for me with the Holy Spirit is you know those old timey divers you used to put on those great big oh, uh -huh. bell yeah, yeah. like like a big metal bell mm -hmm. suit and they walk around on the bottom and they got this big line mm -hmm. going up and 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 that airline is is like our connection to God mm -hmm. then the airline is the Holy Spirit well if, if, if we're getting into areas of sin, sins of the heart, uh, we're not killing people, we're, but you know, we're, we're, we're just, we know that we're having sins of the heart go on and we're not clearing, confessing and clearing those up. It's like the hose gets kinked mm -hmm. and, and we, we don't have the same level of power and insight to move forward. Well, sort of like what we looked at last week with uh, correction, like if the Holy Spirit's correcting you, 
um, a, a reason for that, the way, reason that you and I might have to correct each other or the Holy Spirit certainly does, it's to protect us from sin's deceitfulness. And, you know, we looked at the last week was the, the goal is not deception, the goal is destruction. So, you know, and, and that verse was written to other Christians. It wasn't written to non-Christians. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think even though there is this question like, well, he already forgave me. I don't know why I have to keep confessing my sin. Didn't Jesus already forgive me of all my sins? Well, yes, but there's that acknowledgement on my side of I need to keep those those accounts short. Otherwise, it becomes really easy for me to go, well, that sin isn't really a big deal. And then I start walking down the slippery path towards really bad sin and being taken out by by the deceitfulness of sin. Yeah. So that's so I mean, that's basically what it looks like when we're clearing up things with, with God. Um, then when there's between us and another person, uh, if I know that I did something, let's say that I, even if it was accidentally, but I, I realized that, you know what, I uh, falsely misrepresented something or I said something as fact and then I later found out that it was not true, so therefore I, I lied. Not mm-hmm. not intentionally, but I just I lied to someone. You can go, you can just go to that person and you say, you know, hey, Brian, um, when I said that I had millions of Twitter followers, um, <laughs> it, that wasn't actually the number. W- would you forgive me? I, yeah. I lied. Again, name it, say what it was, right. and then ask for forgiveness. W- will you forgive me? Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes, though, we, we know that like there's some, like you can feel that you don't have a right relationship with someone, and sometimes we need to go to that person and I'll say, you know, Brian, um, our relationship seems to be a little bit different right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I wonder, you know, have, have I offended you or sinned against you in, in any way? Um, because, because I, I want to have a clear relationship and I'm just, I'm just not aware, you know, and mm-hmm. then that gives you now the opportunity um, to tell me, well, well, yeah, you know, you, you were, uh, you were really harsh with me and uh, yelled at me and screamed at me three days ago, which maybe I totally forgot about. Right. And you're having a trouble trusting and following me. Mm-hmm. So then I, now I've asked you, I know that information and, and then it's like, Oh yeah, that's right. I did do that. So now I can, I can clear, clear it up. Um, it could be possibility that you might tell me something that I totally comes out of left field mm-hmm. at which point I would, I, I still, it's a great thing we had this conversation because now I can say, well, Brian, thank you so much for telling me about that. I want to, I want to pray about that. I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to, I, I want us to have a clear relationship, but I'm going to take what you shared with me. I'm going to check in with Jesus. Now, chances are that when those types of things happen, as soon as you go check in with Jesus, he's like, yeah, you did that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that's talking, uh, to, to the other person. Another thing though, is like, maybe, um, maybe I stole from you. Mm-hmm. Um, stole some money, you know, you weren't looking and I borrowed $20 from your wallet. Um, in that case, when I ask for forgiveness, I also need to make restitution. So I need to give you back, um, mm-hmm. you know, those, those $20. So it, so we, so we need to have the, the clear relationships between God and us and between us and other people's people. And we, sometimes we just know that mm-hmm. I, I know exactly what I did. Other times, I feel like there's something here, so I'm going to check in. Uh, and again, one of the most natural things, I mean, because we're humans, we're sinners, we just get crossways with mm-hmm. the people that we're closest with. I don't know about you, but I think the people that I have to ask forgiveness for the most, and I do have to ask forgiveness, <laughs> uh, are first my wife, and then mm-hmm. my kids, and then and then my coworkers. I mean, those are the people that I spend the most time with. I have. I have an uncle who lives in Northern California that I haven't seen in a, in a couple of years, probably. Um, there's not a lot of opportunity for he and I to get crossways just because of proximity and, yeah. and spending time together. So, yeah, there's a interesting thing uh, in clearing up relationships, particularly with me and my wife, that has saved our marriage. Uh, I don't know probably how many times it, but it's in that I had this vague feeling that something's off. And, you know, what you said before is really played out, that if there is a thing, uh, there is a real offense, and I can check in with uh, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit goes, it was this, probably on this day that you were wearing this, I mean, it's very specific, and the enemy likes to just kind of make a general, you're a horrible person, um, that uh, 
this, this happens more with my wife than with me just because of how we look at the world. But um, say we're in a, a super busy season and I haven't been home a whole lot or we haven't had a chance to connect and talk and um, it's just been busy. And uh, she'll have these thoughts that creep into her mind of, well, the reason that, that Brian's not around is because he doesn't really like you or he doesn't like the kids or he's trying to avoid like, all of these things mm-hmm. that are just populate her head. And she goes, hmm. I don't think that given the history of our relationship that that's true, but I'm just going to check in anyway. Um, so there's this, you know, I just need to hear the words and we'll have this conversation. It's sort of a clearing up relationship, but it's really a way to say no to the lie of the thoughts. Um, there's been no actual offense there, but it is a way to not let scenarios run rampant and that actually it becomes an offense that never actually happened, but now now we're crossways and there's no way to nail down what happened because it was just influence of the enemy in the mind kind of thing. Yeah, and I think this is, again, the last week of the series, we're going to take a look at how all of the seven are related. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're actually, there's a progressive logic to why you start with number one and then move to number two and three and four and so on. But what you're just describing is also how living... An honest open life relates to this aspect because I'm, I'm the same way you know I mean and guys can probably relate we guys who who uh, work uh, there's stress mm-hmm. involved and sometimes you're you're chewing on a lot of things I mean you and I we, we are, are a lot of our work is is mental it's not necessarily physical so um, it, you know you can still be chewing when you come home mm-hmm. and you don't even realize it you know and so Jessica and I will sometimes have the same conversation. It's like, you know, you, you seem like a, you seem a little distance from me or from me and the kids. Is, is everything okay? Is everything right? And then I'd be like, oh, wow. Yeah, I've just, I'm in another room, <laughs> in another box somewhere <laughs> in, a, in a land far, far away. How did I get home? <laughs> um, and, and, but, the, but just checking yeah. in, yeah. then it's like, oh, okay, great. You know, so yeah. then AI recognize they like be here mm-hmm. and then she knows that there isn't anything between us so um so that's that's just a yeah. one example of how those two work together i think one of the things that's important just to kind of like tie a bow on what it looks like another one of the really helpful things that we often talk about is, is we say it like this we say let the circle of confession be the same as the circle of commission mm-hmm. and and what that means is is that those that are involved in in experiencing or witnessing the offense or the sin take place that that's the group that needs to be involved in clearing it up so Mm -hmm. when there are sins of the heart um anger jealousy resentment lust whatever it is uh, those are really sins of the heart and those are between me and god Mm -hmm. Um, really what would actually not be helpful is you know you go to someone and say i've hated you for years or really don't guys you don't ever want to go up to a woman and say please i've lusted after you for years i mean there's just that's going to cause all kinds of problems kinds of problems those those are sins between you Mm -hmm. and god they're sins of the heart so you just you confess it to god ask for his forgiveness he forgives you you thank him you move on Mm -hmm. but sometimes there's the sin is you know between me to another person like we talked about i you know maybe i lied to you or Mm -hmm. i was harsh with you or whatever it may be so i need to go to you but if it was just you and i and say we're having a conversation since we work together in your office Mm -hmm. um and then that's the circle of confession is i need to ask your forgiveness but if i was really mean and harsh and screaming at you and Todd in the next office heard you, then I probably need to, I need to go to him as well because he heard that. Sometimes, you know, we're in a group or on a team and you blow up at somebody. Well, the whole group or team witnessed it. So that whole group or team needs to be involved in um, the clearing up part, you know, so it would be, so a lot of times that would look like, um, you know, you and I are just sitting here, we'll just imagine like we got 10 other Mm -hmm. people in the room and it would be uh, Brian, um, when I said such and such, um, that, that was wrong. W- would you please forgive me for that? And then you forgive me. And then I would look around and I'd say oh, to the rest of the team, you guys all witnessed me sitting against Brian. Uh, I cleared up with Brian, but would you forgive me for setting a bad example? Let's say I'm the leader as, as your leader of the team, would you please forgive me? Mm-hmm. And then everyone in the group can, yes, we, we forgive you. And sometimes even we, we've had, um, when we do a Lord's supper, 
Uh, occasionally, someone has has sinned against the church, um, and that can you know look a, a variety of different ways. It doesn't happen all the time, but I think one one classic example is if if somebody had really been grumbling and complaining and mm-hmm. gossiping to a lot of people, and God, um, uh, you know, really worked in their hearts on that, and then it is right for them to say, you know, I, I've talked to even a number of you here tonight at mm-hmm. one point or another. It was really wrong for me to gossip and grumble the way that I did. Would you forgive me? And then what we do in that setting is um, usually whoever's leading the Lord's Supper will say, okay, if you forgive this person, would you stand up? That way they ask for forgiveness, there's a yes, and then the matter is done. So we forgive so that we can uh, move on from this point. And it's not this constant block in the relationship moving forward. Because too many offenses mm-hmm. is like piling boulders on a, on a, on a highway. There's no way to move forward in the relationship if you don't ever clear things up. Well, and I think that that last thing you said was a um, super important aspect to the clearing up of a relationship. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about um, this time when Pastor Harold uh, had to correct me and, and Glenda about some, some ways we were talking about our leaders to the people that we were leading. And um, there, there came that spot where like, well, I need to confess that and clear that up. So I asked the uh, circle of uh, commission was all in the room and uh, we, we cleared that up. And then I think the greatest part of that whole thing was when Harold looked at me and Glenn and said, okay, now it's done. And he's never brought it up again. Uh, it's never been this thing that has hung over. I've never felt that between him and me that, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this all this shakes out. Um, it's been done. Like the forgiveness was there. Um, and I'll, I'll say this too. If you are in the Fort Worth area and we're having a, a Lord's Supper and you've been around church for a while and you're like, well, they say all this stuff uh, about, you know, how... Uh, Paul talks about how to do this time and part of that is that everybody has essentially everybody has a clear relationship at least the the church that I grew up in like we read and go yeah that's a thing Uh, okay Um, then we pass out all the elements and we're good Um, this is the only place that that I have attended I know we have other uh, churches in our network that practice a similar thing but actually we take Mm -hmm. probably 20 minutes of that time and uh, really try to listen to the Lord. And if he has uh, mentioned something, like you need to go to that person, there'll be people who pop up uh, around the room and say, hey, can we step out in the hall and I need to you know, clear things up. And we actually dedicated time before the elements are passed out, before all of that, and by elements, I mean like the, the cracker and the, and the grape juice, um, that there really is, we have, as best as we know, we are clear before each other, we are clear before the Lord and we can now partake of of this ceremony um that has been so refreshing and so eye-opening and just like i mean it's hard yeah both on the i've got to go check in with somebody but then if someone taps you on the shoulder and say hey can we step out and you're like oh what happened that's hard it's stressful yeah yeah. but it is so good on the other side of actually having real forgiveness is so good yeah yeah we we were talking um a couple of us in a staff meeting um, recently, and, and I, I shared, and I think it's appropriate here, just to talk about that, that feeling. And one of the things Pastor Ben talked about is that there's a spiritual element you mm-hmm. know, to forgiveness. And this was a number of years ago. My wife Jessica and I were helping some family members, not, not in our family, but some family members, a part of Hope. Um, so like family members who were attending our church, they were dealing with some some things Mm -hmm. and um, there was some sibling issues and then one of them had gotten married and there was just this snarled up thing and also the kind of a long history of of some areas of the relationship that had not been cleared we probably met with them a couple of two three times maybe more and and i'll never forget the final meeting when we had we had you know we had helped them facilitated them talking through all of the issues that they needed to talk through and of course you always think it's it's not my fault; it's the other person's right. fault. Now there are things that it's just my fault, like I was a jerk and I sh- and I shouldn't have said that. Will you forgive me? But then there, are, if there are longer term issues, there's probably offenses on both sides, and we'd work through all that. And all parties involved asked for forgiveness, gave for forgiveness, and you could literally feel like the pressure in the room 
leave. Hmm. And because they had, they finally had a clear relationship. And that was, as a pastor, that was a very rewarding thing to get to be a part of facilitating that to happen. Um, So that is the only way you can move forward. And now, I mean, they, they, um, they have a great relationship now. In fact, God has used them teaming together as family members to do ministry in a way that I don't think would have been possible if that hadn't previously occurred. So wow. really, um, really exciting to, to get to see. Um, I think one of the things I want to just mention for a moment, especially if you're not familiar with actually clearing up relationships, um, forgiveness doesn't mean no consequences. Um, you know, there's not a verse in the Bible that says forgive and forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so but that's not what we do. Some offenses that happen, like there are long-term consequences for things that, that we do. I mean, take an extreme example. Um, you know, if, if I was to be uh, recklessly driving and um, actually run over someone uh, and, and they died as a result of it, uh, there, there's a high likelihood that I'm going to face some criminal charges. Now, I can, I can feel awful about it. I can own responsibility. I can directly seek forgiveness of uh, the, the, the family members, and they can even forgive me. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that I may not have to spend time in jail mm-hmm. or I may not have to have financial impact. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that, that's kind of an extreme example, but where it, where it really hits home is, you know, if, if you and your wife are just sort of getting in an argument, you've been married for a number of years and, and you say something you shouldn't, you get crossways, you clear it up. That's a relatively maybe short process of like, yeah, I was really harsh. I shouldn't have said that. And you, you ask forgiveness, you're given forgiveness, you move on. But if there's deep betrayal, um, and the relationship is really damaged, forgiveness can be given, which mm-hmm. means you're not going to hold it against the person anymore. But it's probably not wise to just uh, share the same level of information with that mm-hmm. person yeah. who just gossiped about you to you know, the world and betrayed you. Um, so, it, so a lot of times, especially in, when larger offenses happen, the relationship, you know, if, if, if the relationship was here after a major offense happens, forgiveness can be given, but the relationship's got to take a couple of steps or even more back. And then over time, it can be built yeah. back up. But it isn't just that there's no consequences for our sin and, and for our behavior. Or again, you know, I mean, if, if, I, um, if I borrowed a, a tool of yours, to, to do some work around the house, let's say it was an expensive tool. You know, so I don't have it. It's five hundred something dollar tool, but you've got one, and, and I just like and even if I take try and take care of it, and I, I tear it up and, and break it, it's not enough for me. Brian, I'm I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me for mm-hmm. ruining your tool? And I give you back this pile of junk. I mean, really, I need to ask your forgiveness. But then what I need to do is I'll say, Brian, I don't have five hundred dollars right now. I have here's a hundred dollars, and over the next couple of months I, I can pay you back but but i owe it to you to pay back this so it's not just oh sorry no consequences yeah that's really good i do think in along with that uh, this is a thing that um i've noticed over time too like you know because we're at home with our families the most they get to see our sin more up close than everybody else so the chances of offending go up and all that we've already said um, one of the things that uh, we've practiced at our house because we've watched other families kind of trip over this at times like, well, well you know, we don't want to have that same problem of um, I, I said something stupid and I offended my wife and we clear it up. But then to take a moment in there to say, now, how did we get there? Mm-hmm. How can we not do that again? Because while clearing up a relationship is really, really crucial and helpful. Um, you shouldn't just be gunning for like, hi, I, boy, so glad we can clear up relationships. It, you know, you try to avoid being in the scenario where you need to clear up in the first place. So how did I offend you? How can we, the next time that kind of scenario comes up, how can we sidestep that so that we can 
have a clear relationship without having to go through being offended first um, is super helpful, as opposed to, well, I forgave you, and I do, and the Bible teaches to forgive a lot, um, but let's figure out how to not trip over the same mistake over and over and over again. Yeah, and I think, too, particularly, um, one of the things important to mention when it comes to uh, clearing up relationships, the Bible says that you know, as much as possible, we're mm-hmm. to be at peace with everyone. Now, there are people that you just can't be at peace with them, and it, it, it's really on the it's on the side of the offender to seek forgiveness. Mm-hmm. So, if if I had done something and I and I come to you because you know the Lord uh, says, Pat, <laughs> you know you uh, you need to ask Brian's forgiveness, but you choose not to forgive me. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that point, it's now between you and the Lord on giving me forgiveness. But I've actually done done my part in mm-hmm. um, in trying to clear up the relationship. So I think this is also sometimes it's difficult because you know maybe uh, Christians, followers of Jesus, who understand this, you know, really when it comes down to it, whatever. Uh, now, say you came to me and asked me for forgiveness, and I didn't want to forgive you. Like, really? Like, well, Christ has forgiven me for so much exponentially more yeah. when he died on the cross. So whatever offense that you did to me is yeah. this little tiny petty thing. So, of yeah. course, I'm, I'm going to forgive you and extend that. Uh, so, but but if, if, you know, if we're starting to write other family members who maybe don't know Jesus or coworkers, yeah. I still need to ask their forgiveness. And, and I've had awkward moments when I have... When I was working in business, mm-hmm. where I needed to ask forgiveness of a coworker. Now, the great thing here, I still have to ask forgiveness of my coworkers, but <laughs> my coworkers are on staff here at the church where we practice the hard attitude, so it's familiar. Mm-hmm. But when I asked forgiveness of coworkers in the past, and they didn't know anything about clearing up relationships, it was it was awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember one particular time. I, in fact, it was the story. So again, this is the, the hard attitudes are, are related. Previously, we talked about. The time when Pastor Held corrected me, and it was mm-hmm. how I related to my boss. Well, part two of that story, I don't think I told it uh, on that day. I met my boss going in to his office the next morning and said, Can I talk to you? And he said, Yes. And we sat down, and I explained to him, You know, do you remember what happened yesterday? He's like, Yes. <laughs> and, and so I explained to him why it was wrong mm-hmm. and asked him, I said, Will you forgive me? Um, and he kind of looked at me like, I don't know if he'd ever been asked by an employee to ask for forgiveness for an employee. And, and he was like, oh, yeah, I, you know, well, yeah, it's okay. Don't, don't worry about it. Well, that was his way of, I mean, he was something totally foreign. But yeah. even if he had said, no, I'm not going to forgive you, I still did my part in going to him to clear up the relationship. So that's, a, that's an important thing to, like, I got to own my stuff. I can't own your stuff. Um, so I think that's, that's an important thing. So I think, you know, we've talked about stewardship. It's my yeah. responsibility to clear up the things that I know that I need to clear up, but I can't play the Holy Spirit for someone else who then is going to give the forgiveness that I ask. So I have a question on style Okay, when it, when it uh, comes to clearing up relationships. So there's the, um, if, if you have been at our Lord's Supper experiences, and again, if you're in the area, the next time we have one, which will be in a couple months, you should be here. It's, it's really good. Um, but there is that rehearsal you talked about of statements that you can make to both ask for forgiveness and to give forgiveness. And there are those sort of false apologies that we hear in the news all the time of, if you were offended by what I did, then I apologize. Or there's all these conditional things, which isn't really an apology. It's not owning the thing where um, I've seen people who are trying to start employing this particular hard attitude or I have somebody who doesn't follow Jesus who does for whatever reason they're like hey this clearing up things a good idea or whatever and they and they say things that in that rehearsal we go well that's not a real apology you know you just said I'm sorry or you said I apologize you said well if you were offended you know all those magical things that go well that's not a real apology and then I don't feel inclined to forgive because you didn't stylistically do it the right way um, 
<laughs> you know, you know what, what is the responsibility for me as a follower of Christ, even if the ask is imperfect, to go ahead and to, you know, forgive them? Yeah. So, sh- so the real question behind the question is, should I turn around and give them correction for the way that they're <laughs> trying to, <laughs> to clear up with me? Um, you did it wrong. I, I, yeah, I, I think, again, I think it goes back to stewardship. Um, I, oh, I'm trying to train and, and coach my kids on how to ask forgiveness of, of each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of them hits the other one or takes the toy or does whatever it is. I say, no, you need to say to your sister or you need to say to your brother, when I did blank, mm-hmm. that was sin, will you forgive me? And then they say the words, sometimes it's like, when I hit you, that was sin, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. And then we usually have them hug, you mm-hmm. know, a- afterwards. I think I, what I would try to do with it with a church member, um, I, I, would, I would give grace for someone who's brand new, someone mm-hmm. who, especially if they're a brand new Christian, or even if they're not yet a Christian and they're just trying to learn what this thing is. Um, maybe a member of our Antioch training program that you've, mm-hmm. you've been through and you're a mentor in now. If, if one of our Antioch students was to do that, what you yeah. described, I, I might give them some coaching on, uh, yeah. talk to me more about this. But generally what I would want to do is if someone, if, if, if the Lord has spoken to someone and said, look, there's an offense here, you need to clear up. And, and they go ahead and they're obedient and they follow and they come and try to uh, clear up, then I'm going to give some grace, which part of the answer to the question is that's the very reason that we actually rehearse it before yeah. we do the Lord's Supper so that we can just model for people. You know, mm-hmm. we, say, we tell them, well, just don't say I was sorry. You know, I give you the shortened version here. We say, don't, don't say like, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Just say, when I did blank, that was sin. Will you forgive me? Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, it's just a sentence or two, very short, very specific. Because again, the, the Holy Spirit will, will be specific in how we sin. Uh, the enemy will just like, oh, I'm just this horrible person. And, yeah. you know, why, why would anybody love me? And, uh, you know, why would anybody be my friend? No. Um, so I, w- I would think I would, I would hope I would give grace depending on where uh, someone was. You know, if a staff member or a deacon or a yeah. leader who's been around for a long time, um, that might give a coaching opportunity, but generally I want to, I want to forgive. And, and I think the other thing we, we are to forgive. And, and sometimes I, I've heard of, of people say that they, they actually, they told the person, I, I, I really want to forgive you, but this is a really big deal. And, um, I, I need a, I, I need a couple of days. Or, or a couple of minutes or whatever it yeah. is, depending on the size of the offense. So, um, you know, the kids hit each other, they need to immediately clear it up and move on. But if there's been a really big offense, mm-hmm. um, it actually, the right thing to do might not be just to say yes, because then, cause you want to take it seriously. Yeah. And forgiveness is, is about not holding that against the person anymore. So if, if you're not ready to do that in that moment, then just be honest. Now you need to work towards that. So this isn't a license like, oh, you don't have to forgive them. You, but yeah. you also need to be open and honest about where you're really at. I would, I would tell them, I, I, you know, yes, you have, you did hurt me and you hurt me really, really bad. And, and I want to forgive you. I, I've been praying about this. I don't want to sin and lie right now and tell you yes when I'm not there. So I, I, I need a you know, couple mm-hmm. minutes or whatever it is. Um, so, but I, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I would say. Yeah, that's good. Well, I think it's, you know, as you mentioned and, uh, Pastor Ben also mentioned on Sunday that they are all, all of the hard attitudes are in an order, an intentional order. Um, and they all build off each other. And this is sort of the bridge hard attitude between how you and I relate to one another. And then the, the remainder of the hard attitudes are how I relate to the body of Christ. How do I relate to the organization of the church? And I think that's crucial because if we don't have clear relationships, we really can't team together. We can't be the body of Christ. We can't be that family and do anything effectively in the direction that God wants us to go. It would just be a mess of snarled up relationships. So, uh, starting next week, we hop over into that territory with 
uh, participating in the ministry and looking at serving. Um, again, if you're in the area and uh, uh, are able to, we would love to have you attend our worship service. We're at 1750 Beach Street. We're right at the corner of Beach Street, 930 in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, if you're not in the area or uh, don't want to get out of the house or can't get out of the house, whatever the, the issue is, then we'd... Uh, ask you to hop on at hopechurch.com and uh, watch the service next week there. Um, Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks.